four-term Hawaii Congresswoman and Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard. Joining us from the state of New Hampshire, you're going to spend a, a long time up there over the next uh, year or so. Good to see you. <laughs> Aloha, Leland. Good uh, to talk to you. All right. Happy Easter to you and yours. Uh, as we look at this, Same you, you put out a statement that said it is time to move on beyond this divisive issue. Uh, read into that. Is it time to stop talking about impeachment? Uh, well, look, I supported the Mueller investigation because it's an important question uh, about if or whether or not the president colluded with a foreign country to interfere mm -hmm. in our election. The conclusion that came from that Mueller report was that uh, no collusion took place. Now is the time for us to come together as a country mm -hmm. to put the issues and the interests and the concerns that the American people have at the forefront and take action to bring about real solutions for them. An uh, you know, I'm running, I'm running for president now. I don't think that we should defeat Donald Trump through impeachment. Hmm. I think it's really important for us in this country to come together and have the American people vote to take Donald Trump out of office in 2020. I'm running for president to hmm. bring values of service above self to the forefront, to the that, White that, House, once again, so we are focusing on the interests of the American people first. Th that's interesting because that's what uh, Dana Perino said on Friday that she thought would be an interesting lane for any Democratic candidate uh, to try and take on. Are you worried that the more the Democrats talk about impeachment, the more it helps President Trump with his re-election bid, a la the impeachment process against Bill Clinton ended up with him having the highest approval ratings he ever had? You know what I'm worried about is the continued divisiveness and putting partisan political interests ahead of the interests of the people. Rather than recognizing, as I heard from someone who came to a town hall we had here last night in Exeter, who talked about how his family continues to struggle with the cost of health care, how he as a middle class family, he and his wife working as public school teachers, struggle just to make ends meet every single day and he feels like their challenges and their concerns are not being heard because of this hyper-partisanship and divisiveness I'll, I'll that we're seeing in a Washington that's disconnected from the challenges they're facing in their lives. That's what we need to be focusing on. Okay, so, well, that's not a no in terms of the concern that impeachment might help. Uh, President Trump, I want to bring you to the issue of this bombing in Sri Lanka. Uh, unquestionably terrible, unquestionably it's been condemned. We hear that all the time from the U.S. government. You have a unique foreign policy of sort of pulling back on American uh, intervention around the world. How would that play out in a situation like it with the Sri Lanka bombings? Uh, well, first of all, you know, like people all across this country, our hearts and prayers right or with the people of Sri Lanka during this terrible tragedy of this terrorist attack that has taken hundreds of people's lives and left many hundreds more injured and wounded. Uh, when we look to our foreign policy, we can see how uh, there are many problems that need to be addressed. If the intelligence reports that are coming out around this terrorist attack in Sri Lanka are, are proven to be true and the investigation is ongoing to see who is actually responsible, but the early intelligence reports point to a terrorist group in Sri Lanka that adheres to the same uh, most extreme uh, exclusivist and intolerant form of Islam that fuels right, terrorist but if America organizations pulls back like around the world from taking these groups on, if America pulls well, back from taking these groups on, doesn't it just allow more attacks like this? We need to take the threat of terrorism very seriously. As a soldier, I enlisted yeah. after the attacks on 9-11 to take on these terrorist groups who attacked us and who took thousands of American lives. Soldiers, service members, people across the country who enlisted after 9-11 take this threat very seriously, which is why we are so offended and angered by actions that this administration has taken mm -hmm. to cozy up to and to support the interests of countries like Saudi Arabia who are the number one propagator of this very same ideology that fuels terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. I think it's fair to say that the, 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 Wahhabi, the, the, the Saudis have cracked down on Wahhabism around the world. The, the, the Saudis have cracked down on Wahhabism in, in a pretty significant way. You, on the other hand, have gone and met with Bashar Assad and said the U.S. should essentially try to take I, our, I wanna, foot off, our foot off the neck, boot off his neck. 
I want to correct you on this. The Saudis have not cracked down on the spread of Wahhabism. They continue to spend billions of dollars spreading this ideology around the world, which is providing this fertile recruiting ground, hmm. which is fueling terrorist organizations like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. It is a country that continues to provide direct and indirect support but to could, terrorist groups could you like Al-Qaeda in Yemen and How does taking... No, no, no. How no, no, no. Does, I want to stop. I understand I want to that we can, right we can disagree on the issue. We are talking about terrorist we can attacks disagree on, on this the issue. country. We are talking about well, what this if, What about Iran? Should we have our... Should we have, up. Madam, Con should we have our, our foot <laughs> on the, you, you on the neck of Iran? You asked me to come here to share my views on these issues. I'm trying to share them and you're not allowing me to do so. And that's unfortunate because these are issues <laughs> just that asking threaten for an the answer safety to the question. and security of the American people. You made a statement that is false about Saudi Arabia. And it no, speaks directly but to actions that this administration has taken in continuing to support the interests of Saudi Arabia. Continuing oh, to you've made, ma'am, you've made your point about Saudi Arabia. Let's move on to Iran. Ma'am, you've made your point about Saudi Arabia. Let's move on to Iran. Should the United States have its boot on the neck of the Iranian regime that supports terror all around the world, or not? Because you 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 have a policy of taking our boot off the neck of one of Iran's closest allies, which is Bashar Assad. So with respect to Iran, yes or no, should the United States be tough on them and continue to try to force regime well, first, change? First of all, let me be clear about you are completely twisting and misconstruing my policies, and you're not really giving me the chance to, to convey clearly what they are. When we're talking about terrorists, who attacked us on 9-11? The, uh, the majority of those who attacked us on 9-11, did they come from Iran? All but one came from Saudi Arabia. Did they? I Correct. said all but one came that from Saudi Arabia. That is my point exactly. That is my point exactly. Well, who so killed, who, ma'am, who killed threat, all the Marines the in the Beirut barracks? Spread. No, if you want to go terror attack for terror attack, you're not, you can't. You're not, you're but you're not, not, you're not answering the question. Okay. points here. I am very clearly answering your questions, but you continue to try to divert okay. away from the facts and the truth that I'm presenting <laughs> to you and to your viewers about the threats that face us in this country. It, it, it's tough. I, I asked you a specific question. About, I asked you a specific actions. question about Iran. We didn't get an answer. We got to leave it there. We appreciate it. Thank you for being here. We'll have you back anytime. Have a great day. You too. Happy Easter.